Hey you guys, so this is no longer gonna be a first impressions review of the Tarte Gem Powder Foundation because I was trying to film this last week and the weather was a little bit challenging. It kept going in and out of clouds and everything like that. So I had to scrap that video and I was like, you know what? I'll just use this all week and I'll let you guys know how I like it, show you the different ways of applying it and all of that stuff. So yes, this is kind of a more in-depth review of the Tarte Amazonian Clay Gem Powder Foundation. And I think that's good too. By the way, if you don't know who I am. My name is Ashley Ellick. So nice to meet you. Hope you are doing really well. If you are one of my returning subscribers, well, hey, how you doing? How is it going? Because man, times, times are crazy, but makeup always kind of recenters me. Does it recenter you too? Because I love it. I can't get enough. Oh baby, oh baby. So I'm ready to dive into this and talk about all the specs, talk about like the comparison situation between, did this, did this replace the Amazonian clay powder from Tarte? We're gonna talk about that. And if you're ready to dive in with me, then uh, let's go, boo. Boop. First and foremost, here is the powder up close. That packaging is so pretty. It's a beautiful rose gold with palm leaves. And just like the original Amazonian clay powder, there is a little netted kind of situation. So you can kind of dip the powder, the brush, and it helps it not to be so messy and just like a big vat of powder. So I, I do really like that feature, definitely. I don't know if you can see the swatch because it is a close shade match, but I got the shade Light Neutral, which I typically am in Tarte foundations. They can always just be a little bit different though between the different foundations, but I felt like it's a pretty good match and we'll talk about that as I am applying it. This retails for $39, which is very similar to the original powder as well. Now I took a look at the ingredient list because I saw a lot of people asking Tarte, hey, is this replacing that? Tarte, they don't really ever come forward and say yes or no a lot of times. Sometimes they do, but I haven't seen any response from them. So I looked at the ingredient list of the original one compared to this one. There are some similar ingredients, but there are some new ingredients in this one too. Mica is the first ingredient on this one. So we know it's gonna give off some shine, okay? We know it's gonna be really glowy. And I think that's why they call it gem powder now. But then some of the other ingredients, yeah, are very similar. So they probably just rearranged it, maybe played around with the different amounts used and have landed on this. Now I will say, I'm not gonna keep you waiting. I have really been enjoying this foundation over this last week that I've been using it. And I do like that it's versatile and I can use it in different ways, which I will be demonstrating today. One side of my face, I'm gonna be using the sponge that comes with it. And on the other side, I'm gonna use my brush. And I think that it's it's nice both ways. I've also used different primers and it doesn't really matter which primer that I use necessarily. They've all been working really well. It just kind of changes the finish a little bit. So the first time I used it, I got a really glow we look by using the Milani with a glass skin primer if there's if that's still available so if you want a really glowy look you can use that one but today I'm gonna use the Tula brighten up smoothing primer gel only really because there's like barely any foundations I compare this with because of like compatibility wise. So the powder it's been working really well with. But I'm sorry I don't have the original powder to test out and do a side by side comparison for you. Hopefully somebody on YouTube does do that. But I know that that was like a cult favorite. People really liked that original one and were disappointed. So I feel like this one, just because of that glow factor, those ingredients that are extra glowy, you know, with the mica and stuff, that means, you know, you're gonna, it's gonna be more glowy compared to that one. And it, and the shine and the glow and the, the sheen on your skin really does come through, which I personally love. And I feel like it's very on trend. However, not everybody likes that. So keep that in mind. All right, so since this is a powder foundation, I'm gonna take my Tarte Shape Tape and I'm just gonna kind of spot conceal the little areas and I need a little extra help. I'm not gonna do full, full, coverage on my cheeks. I know I usually do, but when I try out new foundations for you guys, I like you to be able to see how much coverage you get. Since I have freckling, I have redness and all of that. So you can kind of base your, you know, thoughts and opinions on seeing how much coverage it gives. So that looks good right there. And then I'm also going to conceal under the eyes right now because I don't want to do that on top of powder. No, no. Oh, let's just blend, blend, blend. So you're going to be prepping the skin, but what's so nice about this powder is, you know, you don't have to do all the after work unless you want to do blush and bronzer and stuff. Now that my skin is all prepped and ready to go, I'm going to take out this little spongy guy. I'm going to use that on the other side though, just to show you how full of coverage you can get with this. Right now I'm going to be taking this fairly dense kind of rounded brush. You can use like a flat kabuki too. I'm just gonna dip it into the powder, tap off. This shade, unfortunately, is a little tiny bit dark for me. It looks darker going on than it actually adjusts to, which is nice. I was really worried about that the first time that I used it because 
when I do the sponge, it just looks really dark, but then it kind of adjusts, which is weird. Like I said earlier, I am the shade light neutral, so I, I don't know what's going on with Tarte. I wish they would kind of uh, try to uh, color coordinate a little bit better. While I use this powder, I kind of swirl, but I also stroke down to finish. So I go like that and down, if that kind of makes sense. And I just kind of build it up to my liking. It's been such a breeze to just kind of throw on, which is nice to have another option. I used to love foundation powders and then because I have dry skin, I kind of got out of the habit of it. And maybe January isn't the best time to go back to it, but but I also know when, when it starts getting hot again, I'll have this ready to use and ready to go. Although, even though it's been fairly dry where I live and I have tend to, tendencies to have dry skin, the powder's been doing fine, I think because it's so glowy. It's been looking really fine. It's not looking dry or anything. You can kind of see that glow just with that light layer. I have a little bit of my discoloration still coming through, a tiny bit of redness, a little bit of freckles, but that's, I would say that's going in with like a medium amount, you know? I wasn't just dusting it on. I was kind of layering it a little bit, but let's take that little sponge. I'm gonna dip it in. So that little net, I love that little net sifter because it just, it allows you to not dump out too much product. And I'm gonna take that sponge and tap it off on the back of my hand. And then I'm going to do this little press and roll technique. This is something that I learned when I was using the brand Jane Iredell, which is a pressed mineral line. That's a really nice line too, by the way. But I just press and roll it. And then I just kind of build up the coverage. I honestly prefer the overall look of the sponge, the press and rolling. It just feels like it kind of marries into my skin a little bit better, meshes in better. Also the pores look a little bit better, I think because I'm pressing instead of kind of, you know, swirling and lifting. Yeah, my pores are a little bit more pronounced on the brush side, but in a rush, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. We are human, we have pores. Don't let Instagram filters lie to you, baby, okay? It is very normal, very natural to have skin texture, but if we can use products that like smooth out a little bit more, yeah, we might like that more but you're still gonna have them no matter what. Okay, so that side's complete. You see you have a little bit more coverage. I have less of my discoloration popping through as opposed to the redness on this side, I specifically like right there. So I really like how buildable and adjustable it is, which isn't a surprise, it's a foundation powder that's typically pretty standard. And just off of what I've been using for this week, like I said, I really like the press and rolling technique. I just like the way my skin looks a little bit better. It looks less powdery, you know? It doesn't, it's such a beautiful powder, honestly, because it has that gem kind of formula in there that it just looks really glowy on my skin. But keep in mind, it continues to look glowy and glowy and glowy throughout the day, especially if you're pairing it with a glowy primer, you might look a little oily throughout the day. So definitely keep that in mind. I like the look of it. I think that this pow this primer that I used is perfect. Just the Tula, like a basic, simple primer. It does enough on its own. Like if you just want a more natural finish that can get a little bit glowy throughout the day, that's nice. I just really, I feel like, I feel like my skin looks really healthy. I love the Tarte Glow Powder so much. So with this, it's like I don't have to use it because, I mean, I don't have to use it 100% because I, I it's kind of like the look my skin would get if I were to use the, like any foundation and then top it with that glow powder. But, but then it's like all in one. <laughs> so I'm really enjoying it. Let me step off really quickly, finish the rest of my makeup, and I'll show you what that all looks like together. Okay, so this is with all my topping products on. I haven't done my eyeshadow yet because I'm filming an eyeshadow video. It's almost on the dollhouse from Blend Bunny. This is my independent brand for the month. Side, side note, in case you aren't familiar, I'm doing a small indie brand at least once a month. I'm featuring a new one that I'm trying out that's new to me. Not new in general, just new to me. And this is here, this month is this. But anyways, this is the foundation. This is what everything looks like. I'm really enjoying this foundation so far. Like I've said, I mean, I've used it a week now and it's just a really nice foundation. I'm super happy with it. I do tend to like Tarte foundations. Most of them play pretty well with my skin. Just like I mentioned when I did the Tarte Cloud Coverage Foundation, which a little update, I've been using that one too. And I do really like that one. I feel like they really, really nailed it. It's kind of silly that they called it Shape Tape, but whatever, I'll get over that one 
Monday. I do really like that one. So just a little update on that. And of course, I will continue to update you guys on this one. My Insta stories over on Instagram. So make sure you're following me there at Ashley Ellix. And I am working on my Tarte ranking foundation list, but they keep coming out with more foundations. So I keep having to test more and adjust and everything. And I want to get footage of all the foundations so you guys can see the different coverages and things like that. So you can decide for yourself which one you like, or if you're just curious and see where maybe your favorite Tarte foundation fits into my list. Because while I like most of them, there's a, there's some that have been major, major fails. So that's it for today's video. Thank you for stopping by and seeing my thoughts and opinions on this new or reformulated Tarte Amazonian Clay Gem Powder. Let me know down in the comments below if this is something that you want to try too. Make sure you subscribe before you go and I will see you guys in the next video. Okay, all right, bye.